Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Watson team from OCBA. You see in the top corner, the, the, the man still in school, Olivier, is the uh, is part of the Watson team now. Some people might have seen him. He used to be called the MIO, Mobile Implementation Officer, but now your title is what, Olivier? Uh, mobile support technician. Mobile support technician. So the job title's changed slightly. So if you've heard MST, it's a mobile support technician. Um, then of course you have Maite, uh, with technical referent from uh, in Nairobi, and you have me, technical referent on the beach in Barcelona. So this is the Watson team here. Uh, it's very nice we have a group of people and we have the, the normal rules that if you want to say something, either put your hand up or put it in the chat and I'll record it and I'll bring it in later, and uh, I think it's going to be around 20 minutes or half an hour of a, of a presentation, and we have a little, how long was it, Maite? Yeah, or even less than that, let's see. Yeah, even yeah. less than that, and, and then it's more of a discussion and answer, answering your questions and uh, clearing up any uh, misunderstandings that we have. Okay, so if that's it, I'll hand in any questions from anybody? Uh, no, fine, if so, Maite, you can go ahead. Okay, so hello to everybody. Uh, let me just first um, share my screen. I believe you should start seeing my screen now. Uh, let's hope yes. it, uh, it uploads. Yeah, so, so the, the little discussion today, it was uh, mostly to try to to share a tool that we have uh, just uh, updated and that we believe it can uh, help you uh, in order to have a little bit more understanding of your how is it going in the health facility that you are working in. This is the reason why we thought this meeting try to have as many people as possible from the field team as well to get your feedback and your comments and, uh, and see what you where are you at? Okay, so basically it focus, the objective of this, of this meeting is that all of you have clearly the, the importance of three basic, what we call the three key basic indicators, that it would be the quality of the water, how well our water is chlorinated in the health facility, the quantity of water, how much water we are really distributing in our health facility, and then, and the quality of the segregation. How good are we doing the segregation? The second objective is that this data can easily, the way that we are collecting it, can speak to you and can take action as well. So, because I believe most of you will be already collecting data about water quality, perhaps about water quantity, and eventually about segregation. But is this data now doing some action out of it? Is there anything that comes as a result of that or not? So we believe with this tool, eventually can already start speaking a little bit more and can, can, uh, can um, some action can come out of it. And finally, because the way we, we will share it, I mean, making this connection as well, already with the team channel that you are now linked, we can keep continue discussing if you have some challenges, if you have some comments on the tool, so that will be a direct easy access that you can ask other people that are already in this Teams channel, or we will create um, a small uh, challenge or a small posting in the community of practice that perhaps you are familiar from uh, Tembo, in which you could also put your, your questions and your comments and uh, share it with everybody. If you have questions as I'm talking, just do not hesitate to post it on the chat and then uh, Paul will, will stop me because otherwise me, I don't see you or, <laughs> or the chat. So this, what you saw now, is the, the form that we are talking about. This is what we call the daily, weekly, what's a monitoring form. So this would be a little bit along with the form that you already know that is the what's an evaluation form. Okay, so this form has different tabs uh, and then we will specifically talk more about the second, third, fourth, well, yeah, 
I mean, the, from the second tap to the <laughs> to the last tap. Okay, so let me just go now. We'll start with this, the the tap three and the tap four. Okay. So the tap three and four, the tap three, basically, it gives us the forms that you would already print out if you are the supervisor, or the log team leader, or the or different supervisor position within your health facility. So you would be in charge of printing up these forms and then delivery to the person that is collecting the information. So here I just put like the, the a role of a supervisor that is printing the form that just monitors the free residual chlorine and prints the form that uh, that is in relationship with uh, waste segregation and also prints the water quantity form that is in another tab and gives them to the person that has to collect the data. This, he can do it in a, in, at a weekly basis or whatever. And once a week, yes, he collects all these forms and then it just fills this tab. And you will see right away afterwards, uh, after I pass this slide, I can go here to the Excel where I have this form open. So if I go, go to this third tab, you see it. So you have printed, you give it to the, to, the, to the technician in the field. Perhaps you are the technician in the field. If you are the technician in the field, you will just fill it most likely in a paper format. So that's why you need to have it printed. I do not believe that so far we have tablets in the field to collect this information. But if by any chance you have tablets, people could eventually fill it in already. This form is a form that will be at weekly basis. So every week we will have a form. When this form comes from the, the technician that once a week is passed to the supervisor, or the technician also in the field would put, for example, the date. So today is the 30th of March of 2021. So, uh, it will say point uh, P1. And then the result of the free residual chlorine when it goes to monitor it is 0 0.5. As soon as it points that, so here in this form, uh, it's only possible online to fill these three spots. It's not possible to write in this column. And automatically, it will already show whenever the result is within the, frame, the range that we accept like a, a sort of like a green sort of check point. But if, for example, the same day we are checking another point that uh, is not in the range, for example, 0 0.1, it will already say that it's not in the range. So we will say, okay, we have a challenge here. Okay, we will keep recording. Uh, uh, points p5 p3 and then it will be 0.7 so we'll say it's okay and as you can see here it will appear a one or a zero depending if it's correct or not what we advise is that is that at least three points within the health facility should be monitored every day um, if you do that let me just copy like a little bit faster well, in this case, we'll change. Uh, so you have already some sort of a pre-established days of the week that you can follow or not. But then if you go down, you already see that here it calculates automatically uh, how many points you have tested during that week, how many were in the correct range, and the rate of accomplishment uh, of how you, I mean, of the, the values that you have uh, um, calculate it. Okay. The same thing. So somehow in this way, every week you can have an understanding of how we, how good you have been following um, the free residual chlorine in your hospital. At the same time, this form would be filled by the waste segregator. So it's a matter of giving it to the waste segregator or the Watson technician that might follow the segregation 
and ask him to also do the same for every day. For example, today, he would go for the ways that this coming from the maternity. And he says, is it correctly segregated or not? Focusing either on the waste, on the soft waste, on the sharps. And he will say, yes. Or perhaps it's going to the... to the IPD, the Ward 1 or something, and it's, it's like... A, is not well segregated because it has found some shards within the soft or something that is not properly segregated. So it will keep doing that either like we will we recommend as well is at least to do it for three different locations within the health facility to give a little bit of a representation and it will say yes perhaps. So again by the end of the week if it feels different days. So we will have like a... as well a rate of accomplishment and a rate of like... Okay, let me feel a bit more. <laughs> to be exactly the same as the other one. Oops. Yes, so we have here like a, how many they are... Um, we had like proper segregation, and then here the total of numbers that had been segregated. Okay, so what happens here after the supervisor has filled it is that automatically we have the compilation tab, which is the tab number two, that for every week you will know exactly, okay, for all the measurements that we have done of free residual chlorine, we have 12 that were correct, but then the remaining were not correct. And then for all the 20, we have checked 24 containers of waste container, and there were 16 that were okay, but there were eight that were not correct. So then we just want also to check the quantity of water. So in terms of quantity of water, we have two different tabs that you can use. Either a tab that will guide you in case in your health facility you do not have a meter or if you have a meter. The first one is the one that you have a meter. So basically, once a week, you will go as well to, your, uh, to the place where you have the meter and then you will just, for example, every time you will collect at nine in the morning. Okay, sorry, so we have to also, in order to guarantee that there is no errors, there's always ways that you have to input the data, formats of inputting the data. So at nine in the morning, you will make a lecture of like your litas that you were like uh, um, reading on that, on that week. Like for example, if we go back on the 7th of the 4th of uh, 2021, I, you might say that is, uh, okay, at 9 a.m. as well. And then you can one, two, five, six, six, two. So you already had like the weekly the water consumption, okay? And they have in the, the consumption in liters everything that you had in your health facility. And then you continue filling these ones. So normally, so, so then this number is the one that you can enter here in order to sort of like try to have as well how much of my uh, water consumption it had been on this week. So in this case, we had 302 liters. Does that what I would put here? Here, we could not automatize this because most of you might not have a meter in your health facility, might just be based on filling up a tank and don't monitor yet the, the volume of water automatically, okay? So then in that case, you will just keep here putting the value of like how many liters you are filling up your tanks every, every day and then have an average as well of, uh, of consumption per week. And finally, the water needs. You know that your water needs, it depends sort of like what are the needs that we believe as a minimum needs for your health facility are. 
in your health facility. So that depends on how many beds you might have. So for example, we say that we are in a center that has uh, 50 beds and it has a visit of 100 patients every day. And then it does in average every day, like two deliveries. So here we have that the minimum water needs that we will have are around 3,700 liters per day. So that will be the number that you have to input in here in your, uh, I think it's 3,700 liters. That you would put that would be the, uh, the needs that you would require for the health facility to accomplish the minimum, okay? So right away here, you have the sort of the conditions, how good, how safe is your health facility in regards to try to overcome uh, some of the nosocomial infections in uh, hospital acquired infections, how safe is your hospital for the staff that is managing the waste, for the patients that are coming to be treated there, for the staff that needs to be cleaning, needs to be clean and perform hand hygiene in that specific week. And what we sort of quick say question, is that... Martin. Yes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Maite, a quick question. Just um, MSF Asia, Logco asked a quick question in the chat. And he was yeah. a bit concerned about the um, segregation of the waste in the chat. And he yes. says, should it not be in ranges of waste segregation? In the present format, a big waste mesh is evaluated the same as a small mistake. In other words, if there was a big lot of uh, things wrong in the bin, it's the same as having uh, one thing wrong in the bin. Can you just clear that up, please, Maite? Yeah, yeah, totally. And thank you very much for the question. Indeed, but in fact, you just need a needle badly placed in order to have somebody injured. So the thing is that uh, the thing is to point out if that's very consistent or not and trying to identify, look at it for several weeks and take action into it. Like uh, the challenge now that we, that you might have is that you might not uh, even realize if there's these little mistakes or these little uh, sort of like uh, misplacements of different ways, because that comes from medical, different medical staff and so on, and no action might be taken. So I believe that, uh, yeah, even a small <laughs> mistake in a way can, uh, can be led to some, uh, some, somebody being injured in the health facility and better to identify it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much for cleaning that up, Maite. I think an important point was made there that the Watsons were not responsible for the segregation of the waste. We're responsible of the safe disposal. So if you find something wrong in the way that it's segregated, it's your opportunity where you should talk to the uh, person in charge, the medical person in charge of that. Uh, maybe the committee, uh, putting up in the committee that this is not being segregated properly to give the opportunity for the medicals to be made aware of the segregation not being correct. And as Maite said, uh, one thing wrong in the bin is the same as the whole thing is wrong because we're identifying how many bins that are wrong, uh, not necessarily how badly uh, they're segregated. And if you find that the um, a big waste mess then obviously you should go straight to the uh, medical responsible for that. Okay, go ahead, Martin. Thank you. So basically here you have also like a, a little table where you would copy the values that you got on that specific week. Let's think that in fact it was not week one. I don't know exactly now in which week we are. We might be, I don't know, quarter week um, 12 or something. Uh, but you would, oops, sorry. You would just copy the values that you have imported in the corresponding week. And then the following comes, the following week comes. And then you just do the same here on inputting the, the free residual chlorine that you have calculated, the new segregation. So let's say that that. Uh, now we are in the in the following. We are on the seventh of zero four, two thousand twenty one. Um, sorry, I'm putting all the dates. Just uh, here we would be in the eighth, fourth, twenty twenty one. Uh, jump, jump, and so on. 
pop, pop, and then here, so you have also calculated these points. Basically, to tell you that uh, the forms that you, the, um, here, for example, this point was eight, here was already beta, here was this. Where am I? Uh, so now, once you have updated for the following week, so your values here have already updated. So in fact, what I did, it was not it was not good because I copied as putting it that is equal to here. So I haven't saved the values before. So basically, that's the point that <laughs> we didn't put it like this in order for you not to sort of okay. For example, I say I. <laughs> I, I think you realize what happened, right? By the special, you just buy the you just paste the values, and it is now that you can go to change them another time, and then copy them in the in the in the following following <coughs> sorry in the following week, because like this you don't overwrite them. So when you come here, those are different. So then you will it will be on the following, let's say, on the on the week number two. So let's see this week number two. So then you will just copy them in week number number two if you have update all the different numbers as well. Like you, you would come to the quantity of water. So let's say that that was the 14th. The 14th, 04, 2021, that you also measure it at nine in the morning. And in this case, you had like a 15,000 here. Yeah. So in this case, that week you already you used 3,484. for liters and then in the the water needs for that week specifically where for the second week it was like we had still these 50 beds the occupation were higher and we had also higher uh, deliveries so in that week we had a needs of uh, 4,500 uh, liters per day. So as well, I could copy these ones and just paste them here just as the values because otherwise you will delete it as the values. So then you keep a tracing of how much these values are, are, are progressing and how good or bad or which would be the possible action points you could take from here. Um, it's possible for you to plot it and then see it in a better visual way uh, because of some gadgets that now we have some some uh, uh, bugs that are now in the new current of Excel. We didn't do the graph for you because otherwise it was crashing in some of the platforms that we were using. So that's why we leave it this way. But um, basically, you can now try to see if there's an improvement over time. The idea is that in a few months from now, this data is inputted by a data recorder into the health monitoring system, that HMIS that we have for the medicals. And some countries will start piloting this very soon. So this, this is also as well where it will be become more easy to also take action out of it. Because unless we record it, unless you record it and you can sort of have a progression on scene, you, it's, it's difficult to know if you really need to put an action or not. In order to facilitate that as well, we put a last tab that is more linked to resources. So in this case, you have 
some items that are already within the catalog. So here you have a link to Unicat that for those that are not aware, Unicat is the way the, the site, the current site that you can check all the different items and is accessible from the field that we have in the catalog. Okay, so here you have the code, you have the link to Unicat, so you have the regular pull testers, the tablets that you need to monitor the free residual chlorine. You have also different water meters that you could purchase there or you can just go to your hardware store that might be in the capital of the place that you are working or just look at it in MSF Logistics. So then you could just facilitate the quantity of the water. For example, doing this exercise in Niger that we started doing a pilot, we were able to justify a project that completely rebuilt the water network on that hospital, given the huge leakages that we were having in that hospital and, uh, and the little water use that we were having on the, on the other hand and high rate of infections. So right away, we rebuilt the water network, having like a, a much more reliable and sort of like reducing the water waste that we were having in, the, in that health facility. Also, together with the, with the items from the catalog, we also put links to different training material. So here there's a, a link to how we use, uh, how we measure for residual chlorine. So if you would click into that uh, link, you would go directly. I believe you still see my screen. So I changed now to the YouTube uh, channel. So you have how So how we are monitoring, how we can use a pull tester is plain by Paul. You also then, let me change one second. How, oh no, yeah, I wanted to come here. You also have another link, which I believe is very, very useful. And perhaps some of you do not know on like one training that there is in Tembo about clinical skills in IPC. Is a medical training, but it has a lot of information on IPC, which is cross-border. So if you go to that link, basically here you have the different content of that training, which has a lot of information about PPE, and it has one module about waste management. So you can see this nice little video about waste management that you can also pass to your teams in order to be trained more about, <laughs> now let's see if I have a, if I'm lucky and then you can start seeing the video. So I don't know if you can hear it, but. Um, it's, it's not possible when you're on your microphone, Maite. Okay, so in any case, just for you to see and to, to, to be able to, to, well, to know that there is all the resources available for you, that you can use them, and eventually you could even access to them, not even through Tempo. So if you need that, just get in contact with us. Furthermore, we also put a link to our YouTube channel because there is also information that can be very interesting for you in the MSF Log Okba <coughs> YouTube channel. So most of the videos that had been done also for COVID, in terms of IPC are posted here. There's also videos on basic of logistics where it talks as well on like water quality, how we use the, the, the one I shared with you about uh, how to use the, the pull tester, but as well the turbidity, the turbidity tube. So you can access those ones and the link you have it there, okay? So this being said, let me, oops, no, no, I don't want this, this link, sorry. This being said, and continue with the presentation I was giving you. So here I'm just sharing again the other, the other tab of water quality. And here is the links that I just show you now. So basically this tool is a tool that you can use if it's suitable for you in order to <coughs> be able to ensure that the health facility that you are working has these three basic indicators 
uh, fully accomplished and to take action in, is if it's not the case. So like this, any build up uh, sort of challenge in terms of <laughs> IPC nosocomial infection can be drastically reduced. So you are making your health facility safer and healthier. And, uh, and I know that is not always challenged to, I mean, easy to put this in place, uh, but uh, as you can see, it's not also difficult to put it in place. I mean, but because there will be challenges. So this, the current Teams link where you are now connected, we can use it as a place where people keep putting their challenges and also the community of practice in Tembo as a way that we can get closer to you to try to uh, ensure that our health facilities are healthy and safest uh, places. This being said, I open it for questions uh, okay. from your side. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Maite. Very good, I think it was very clear. We have a lot of resources there. Um, does anybody want to say anything or have any questions? Is it all fully understandable? Please say something. Oh, a couple of hands up. Let's have a see who's got his hand up. Go ahead, please. Yes, in the in the case of the waste, coming back to the waste, uh, the operator. OK, I haven't seen uh, a hundred percent perfect waste. I've seen from disaster to quite good. Uh, the operator who classifies if it is good or bad should actively look for uh, the state of the waste in each uh, bin, let's say, in each category, or should just, if it is evident, uh, report it as not proper. Uh, yeah, basically that is, is the... Because yeah. it's different if you start looking, you will see more than if uh, you put wrong as something that becomes evident, no? as you see without looking for it. and. Look, well, because we depend on medical staff, on patients, on relatives, on everyone to to do correctly, no? And a syringe put in the wrong place is very bad, but a banana skin put in the other one might not be the same. I know, I think it's, you understand the idea is that it's so wide, this area, so, so complex to say it's good or it's bad. Totally, yeah, totally. That's why it is interesting to uh, start putting to the persons that are doing it a little bit of consistency to record it, to know which is the proper action to be taken on that. Perhaps it's just to ensure that the health promoter that is in the health facility reinforce some messages or put more visuals around or do a training to the medical staff. And uh, so the idea was that at least three ways uh, three waste packets of the soft and the needles are being, I mean, on the sharp, sorry, being monitored as being the ones that can generate more, uh, I mean, uh, somehow a stronger damage or, uh, or can be more harmful towards the staff that are collecting and managing the waste. And the idea would be to start looking like, is it perfect? Like, okay, when I'm doing it, when I'm emptying my bucket, the soft one, into the the, the sort of like the, um, the incinerator, am I noticing that it's bad uh, segregated? Yes or no, you know? It's not something when I'm putting my sharps and I'm like managing my sharps, is it well segregated? Yes or not? So just putting the form by the waste, gener I mean, by the waste, in the waste area, post it there one week, every one, I mean, one week can inform and then filling up for three or four packets every day. That's what it has to be. That's what we believe. If there's a consistent error every single time, it's like, okay, let's go to look a little bit more in depth what's happening here. And then he can tell you, okay, well, it's just this, it's just that. Oh yes, there's a problem every single week. So that was, that's, that was the idea. I don't know if I answer your question, Eduardo. There's one extra yes, thing I'd you, like to you, just, sorry. You answer the question. Okay, there's one little extra thing I'd like to add to that. Sorry, just a safe a safety yes. issue. We don't want people putting their hands in the bins and moving things around looking for <laughs> I know it sounds a bit obvious, but 
do not manipulate the waste. No. Just have a look in the bin from the top and say, OK, that looks OK. And yes, you're not going to find everything. But what you're looking for is if there's constantly someone doing the wrong thing in with a needle or the wrong thing with a, with some uh, contaminated material, then it has to become uh, more apparent. But please don't so manipulate it should not the be, It should not be more clear to avoid people putting their hands looking for the error to report it. Should not be more clear. OK, so perhaps that's a good comment. And we can amend a little bit on the top of this form where it's saying print and give to what time there. And then perhaps say, don't look for it, just look at it. Do I think that's a very a, a waste. Yes, do not manipulate the waste. So yes, I, we will make that amendment. And good I think comment. it's a very Thank fair Thank you very much, amendment. Eduardo, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, a little comment from Jerusalem, please. Yes, uh, first of all, thanks because I found this, uh, these tools are very useful. I have been out of the field uh, for three years, but I remember uh, quite well my experience in Dele, in uh, Rep uh, Republic Central Africa, so it would be great uh, to have it. Uh, so thanks so much. I think it's a very useful tool. And uh, yeah, sorry, maybe I will do a stupid question, but I ask uh, <laughs> sorry at the beginning because uh, maybe it's my lack of experience since I'm missing from the field. The first question is um, when we are monitoring a bit of the consumption of water, is it important, I suppose, that we monitor it every time at the same time, right? In order for us to have a, the, um, uh, an idea of the daily consumption. I mean, if today we monitor it at nine o'clock uh, in the morning, the next day we should, it's important to monitor every time at the same time, more or less. You think it's uh, useful to have an idea for the consumption, for the real consumption of the water? Uh, Might I? Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be uh, yeah much better because uh, like this. Yes, I mean, because otherwise you might be missing uh, some really big moments of consumption. So if you keep it consistent, that will be better. Like, for example, in health facilities, you will have quite a good and important use in the mornings as the cleaners coming. And then, then in the middle, like mid-morning, perhaps you have quite a bit still because the cleaners are, are working. But then in the afternoon, you might not have any. But if you, for example, one day you monitor it at nine in the morning and then the following day at four in the afternoon, so you have missed somehow a big volume of water and you might be delivering, you know, you might be thinking that you are giving more water than the one that they are uh, using or something. So it is good. And I feel also for the teams, if you fix some sort of, uh, you know, I have put in the presentation sort of go, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not here. <laughs> like I have it open it in Teams. Uh, do it every Saturday morning or every Friday morning. I think it helps for the people in the field to really be very consistent. It's like you do it the first thing that you go, um, you know, the first thing that you do whenever you, like for example, like the first thing on Friday is to check for the water. Or the first thing in Saturday is to check for the water and just do the, the water quantity that you are, I mean, read the meter. So that becomes an habitude and it becomes an habitude for the field team that are looking to the three key indicators that can perform more damage and more good to the health facility. Sorry, I went above your question, but I believe you have a second <laughs> question. And I don't know if you, if I answer yours. No, no, <laughs> fair. Yeah, it's fine. And then for the free residual chlorine, uh, this type of indication that is uh, like a weekly monitoring. Okay, for the water, I believe it's important to have it. Uh, for the free residual chlorine, it's important to do it uh, Ev exactly every day of the week, uh, or can we go just uh, randomly check uh, two, three times a week uh, some waste segregation? Also, how what do you, what is your suggestion? Because sometimes uh, we know the reality of the field, and sometimes we don't succeed uh, to do a proper daily monitoring of all these values. I know, and that that challenge, we definitely would try to push for every day like three points. Because we believe that like this, you can really ensure that your dosatron, if you have it, is fine, or you are not having huge spikes back and forth, and then you keep consistent in three points that might be in different areas of your your health facility. I mean, uh, that's these are the challenges that we are thinking, okay, if people really have a challenge on doing that, we can talk more on the community of practice, like saying that identifying one hygienist that has the form and just does that 
as soon as he enters in the health facility. I believe it might be even easier than tell him do it Monday, Thursday, or Wednesday and Friday, somehow. But that, so that's, that's sort of a little bit the, the rationale of it. Yeah, and also to give this, this sense of, this is, this is key indeed. It's like not only, you know, you are also ensuring that your piping system is properly well, if you have not sort of maintained your, your deposits, your, your reservoirs are in the sun, like sort of try to keep anything out of like uh, the water that comes out, drinking your patients is good. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to do it only three times a week. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Good. Okay. But, uh, just, yes. I just want to add. I just want to add something on top of that, if that's okay. I think yes. um, we've, we're leaving it up to you. Obviously, it's your it's 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 your it's your responsibilities, but it's also it's your missions and it's your things. We would like and we would suggest you do the free residual chlorine three times a day, so we identify problems, so you can identify problems. It's for you. It's for your ownership, and for the. When you do it, yes, obviously do it at the same time every day if you can do it. And as, as Maite said, when it becomes a habit, then it doesn't take up too much time. Just to look at a meter as you go past to put a, the tablet in, follow my video uh -huh, on YouTube, and you can see how easy and quick it is to do. It doesn't take a lot of time to do the free residual chlorine once you get the habit of it. So I think it's feasible. Well, let, let's see. Let's see. And as Maite said, if you have problems with it or you have a thing, continue the chat or talk to us. Uh, either on the community of practice or directly to us, and we can help you. Thanks so, so much. Yes, my my question for water consumption was much more. If it's this in the same time, we can monitor a bit better. Uh, we know better the consumption than is if it's done every. Uh, yes, like uh, different. Okay, right. perfect. So so much. Okay, lovely. Thank you. And also, I got a little note again from MSF Asia Logco. And he was suggesting the recording of the chlorination should not be done by the operator in charge of the chlorination. Unlikely that he is accusing himself on the form of not doing his job properly. I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting point, but I think the person, I, I don't know in, if the person who's in charge of the chlorination is the person who does the, the test with the, with the pool tester, I would think. Yes, I hope so, because he's the one that has to see if he's doing it correctly. Uh, it's a, it's not us checking he's doing it. He's checking it for himself. So if he's trying to get the chlorination right, he'll check with his pool tester to see that he's done the chlorination right. Uh, it, this, these forms shouldn't be seen as a way of uh, us saying you've done the wrong thing, because it might not even be him. I had a situation recently where uh, one day the water in the hospital was fine, and then the next day, it was full of fecal coliforms. And it wasn't his fault. What had happened is the water truck had switched over and we had a delivery of bad water. So it's it was it's not uh, a way of checking, uh, saying he's done it wrong. It's more of seeing if there's a problem that we need to solve. So I think that's the point. Maite, would you like to add on, on to that? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, what you have said is, is, is perfect. Thank you. Okay. And we have another hand up. Who's got this hand up now? We have a hand from Somali Watson. Somalia Watson. Oh, nice to have you with us. Yes, please go ahead. Hello, good morning. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maiti and Paul, uh, for the nice presentation. Uh, it's very much appreciated. That really helps us a lot. Uh, just a question. Uh, I, I have the concern maybe it could be an issue to discuss further, is about uh, perhaps the settings or the context. Let's say in a context like Somalia, uh, where we have a partnership or collaboration with the Ministry of Health, where we partially support some of the departments and the other departments are supported directly by the MOH. Uh, how do we guarantee, uh, you know, meeting uh, qualities like, let's say, um, uh, the segregation, for example, uh, I think like in Baidaba, just to give you an, a good example, we are now uh, <laughs> yeah, good. Completing, uh, we, we hope uh, very soon we will have everything up, uh, especially for the West Zone. And uh, the West Zone will be a shared a kind of uh, West Zone, of course, uh, the West uh, coming from the MOH supported department and the MSF supported department will all end up there. And we have to guarantee that uh, there is a proper segregation done by, by all the departments. 
So uh, let's say uh, it will be important that we we monitor the segregation in all the departments, but also for some of the departments, we are not in charge. We are not the responsible, but yet we want to guarantee a proper segregation so that we don't end up having problems for the for the for the operators. So how what do you think? How do we come up with a strategy that will harmonize the the situation? This kind of yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, I, I totally understand that. That's a very, very good point that you raised. Thank you. Well, at the end of the day, we have to see this form is basically for the for the team to use it in the best way, and they can the that they see that fits their purposes. It's like uh, I know that most of you will have already some different forms here and there to monitor some of these parameters. So we put it out there to say, okay, we can try to be more consistent. And there is already there something that you can use for following. So in the case, for example, that you are saying that we are with the MOH, it's like it will happen with Baidoa. Me, what I would say, this is a very, uh, it gives even more consistency to tell the, when you talk with the, with the different representative of the Ministry of Health of the hospital, to say, look at, we are seeing that whenever the waste comes from this area, you know, it's always, is well, or it's consistently or perhaps not, well or badly segregated. So it's sort of like it would be interesting perhaps that we do a general, uh, you know, training on segregation next time that we sit down or in the next uh, sort of like um, evaluation that we will do with the IPC. So I feel it can, it can be, it can facilitate even the sort of like the collaboration between both parties because from our side, we will be monitoring because we want our health, our waste manager to be safe and our hygienist, we have them to be safe. And then from the other hand, you know, you, you can show the person that from the MOE to say, look at, we have been recording this. So there's a challenges. Perhaps we can do something about it. So I don't know. I think I, I would approach it this way. But I don't know if that gives that yeah, uh, think, you see uh, it possibly yeah. working. Yeah, right, uh, mighty. Uh, I remember from experience. Uh, let's say I've been to Lhasa, North, for example, twice, and uh, mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. training the MOH, both both the MSF supported and the non MSF supported departments, and we had to install all the 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 west uh, pins, the west segregation pins, and also with the with the west posters. For proper segregation, so we equip them with all the tools that is that were required. Uh, but yet, uh, we could see a quite kind of a steady progress for the MOH, unlike the MSF directly supported uh, departments. So then we had to come up with uh, with the feedbacks, you know, give them back like this is the challenges we're still facing. We need to improve on this and that. Uh, so it was quite a frequent engagement. Uh, at some point. Uh, it also required a high level advocacy, even, uh, you know, and, and an emphasis on the MOU so that we, 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 you know, we have some level of safety for, for the, for the West operators, because what happens is that uh, uh, for MSF supported departments, they meet the standards. Perhaps there is an improvement in the West segregations, but then if you look at the other departments because of the motivation factor, because of the challenge of you know, resources and things like this, you might end up you know, West is uh, ending up at the West zone that are poorly segregated, that even contains the vials, the ampules, and even the shops. So at times it becomes an issue of accountability and a high level engagement. And considering the fact that there is a motivation challenges and stuff like this, it always becomes uh, an issue. In fact, uh, a very practical example is last Anon. Unfortunately, I've not been to pay double. But it's one of uh, the key priorities or the key issues that perhaps we need to pick it up uh, once the West Zone is complete. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. But um, then it would be better not to measure it then, somehow. No, no. for sure we will. It, it it really helps. No, 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 no. I I I yeah. I really. Uh, uh, I really, you know, support it, and uh, I am for the for these monitoring tools. They're very helpful, extremely helpful. At least it will limit the, the the risks. It will reduce the risks. At least if there's someone following on the on this, then 
people will understand that yes, at least there is uh, some level of uh, you know accountability and follow up, and with more advocacy with our partners, I think there will be some level of mitigation and reduction. So I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it really helps a lot, and we we will have to adapt and implement in the even in the context despite the challenges. Right. Yeah, thank you for your comment because Thanks indeed so much, that yeah. was, that's the goal. In fact, to put the awareness that these these points are important, and uh, yeah. and I think the way that it can be stressed more is like at the end up to you how you see it, that it can benefit to stress these points, the use of this form or, or something else that you can come up. Which I think yeah. by sharing those we can all uh, move forward. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And we have a little question here saying, same issue we have here in Juba. One thing we did was to involve the government cleaning in the training uh, schedules. That was a comment from the Juba Watson manager. Awesome. Yeah, very good comment. Thank you very much. Yeah, and there's also, remember, there's the hygiene committee that we should be involved in as well, which you can identify the problems and that's that's one way of doing it. So cleaning team okay right any other questions and comments please we have five minutes i think just about five minutes to to round things off so any any last comments if you don't have questions now it's fine so it's, it's also good to to finish a little bit earlier which i think everybody is always very busy but we thank you so much for the comments and the the questions all of them were very very relevant and we take note on uh, the comment from asia from eduardo saying to put a more specific note like message to say you don't have to look for for how good it is no get that engaged it's, it's sort of like a visual inspection so we will make these amendments in the forms that forms that are posted and they will be posted in the same location okay and then from this whatsapp i mean no sorry whatsapp no this uh, teams link it will uh, still be active if you have access to teams that could be one way that we can share experiences and things if people have challenges or have succeeds to share with others, but we will also put it in the community of practice. Normally, the community of practice side within Tempo should be working. Uh, there seems to be a challenge only when you access through the phone, but they are really on top of it, but accessing from the computer, it should be okay. So as soon as we have done these amendments within the, within the form, so we will post it as well in the community of practice there so you can visit okay and i uh, i will try to manage if i'm able to or we <laughs> to send like to post the recording as well let you know where the recording will be of the session and then uh communicated you via email that i believe that is the most tangible way so Lovely. yeah thank you thank you so much i, I don't know any more words from olivia paul or any of you yeah olivia would you like to say, say yeah, just to say the recording is going to be posted automatically in this Teams channel. So yeah, after this, all of us can Im immediately have access, immediately after the meeting. Okay, And great. they want to hope you will share the tools. Yes, we'll share the tools as, as soon as we get things done. That's not a problem. So I just want to say thank you very much uh, from the WhatsApp team. Thank you, Maite, for a good presentation. Thank you, Olivier, for being back up. And thank you. I think there was up to 16, 18 people participated in this meeting. So it was a very good turnout. So thank you very much for your attention in this thing. It was very interesting. And I think tomorrow we have a version in French. If anyone's interested in doing the French version tomorrow, <laughs> there's a version in French. OK, so thank you very much, everybody. Um, feel free to put some more comments in the chat box, as Maite says, or set up a, we'll set up a community of practice that we can talk through later. OK, thank you very much. And goodbye. Have a great day. I love you. Stay Bye. safe. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks.